Now that you have disassembled the FBG-1, it's now time to assemble it for its use. When you get your kit, you'll notice that there are two supplied springs. One of the springs is heavier, and one of the springs is lighter. The lighter spring is always going to be used with the 209 primer end, whereas the heavier spring will always be used with the flashbang end. You can tell the two apart by compressing them. The one that is harder to compress will be your heavier one, and the one that is easier to compress will be your lighter one. You're going to take your FBG1 body and you're going to insert the lighter spring for the training end into the body. As you notice, there are two ends for both of the bodies. You always use the deeper end and you install your spring directly down. Once the spring is in, you would like to take your collar and your head and make sure that they are assembled as so and make sure that the firing pin goes directly into the middle of the spring. As you press down on the two parts, you can screw the collar to the body. The firing pin will self-align and you know you have done it right when you see it right there. The firing pin should never protrude past the floor of, of the body. If it does, you either have the spring installed incorrectly or there is no spring inside. If neither of those is an option, please contact Royal Arms immediately. Once those two are together, you will now want to always install your safety spoon and your safety pin. You never want to load a primer or a flashbang onto your FBG-1 without making sure that it is secure. When it is in this position, it cannot fire. Once you have assembled those and have deemed it safe, it is now time to install your lower end. With your 209 holder in place, you drop a 209 primer in. Once it is in, you may now install the two together. You are now ready to train with the FBG-1.